I'm Catherine Paul. I'm Cameron Paul. And we're from Rochester, New York. Our, both of our sons, um, one passed at 19 months, but have CGD. So our first son, Jackson, was born um, December of 2013. Uh, he was a happy kid, healthy kid. Um, he had a couple issues here and there, kind of like respiratory issues. Um, but towards the I would towards the end, um, probably around April, May of 2015, um, he started this chronic wheezing. Um, and at that point, we had gotten chest x-rays, ruled out pneumonia, ruled out a whole bunch of other issues that could possibly be happening. So at that point, um, his doctor and I were trying to rule out allergies, like to our dog and stuff. Um, he did have another chest x-ray at his 18-month well visit and I got a call the next morning from the doctor saying that um, he had to go into the ED for a bronchoscopy because his right lung was like twice the size of his left lung and his whole chest structure had shifted. Um, they thought there was a foreign body blocking the airway that we probably wouldn't even end up saying the night after his bronchoscopy. Um, that was June 10th of 2015. Um, they tried the bronchoscopy, couldn't get through, later did a CT scan and found a mass that was blocking his airway. Um, at that point, they thought it was a cyst. They did a surgery similar to like an open heart surgery um, to remove the so-called cyst. The surgery went very well. We met with the doctor right after. And probably about, I would say, like an hour after surgery. A couple hours, yeah. He just started crashing. He got very sick. Um, he went from being, when we were told he was in the PICU at first, we went from your kid's not sick enough to be in the PICU to the head of the PICU telling us that our child was the sickest person in the entire hospital. Um, he passed away on June 20th of 2015. He presented at that point like he was septic. They tried to run a lot of tests. They tried to give him a lot of medications and nothing seemed to work to a point where eventually um, we just didn't want him to go through that anymore. Um, the doctor said that, you know, chances of him being Jackson again were pretty minimal. Um, and then the other doctor told us that he will not survive, so start calling people to come see him. It was probably about a month after that, it was in July, um, that we met with the infectious disease doctor because after he had passed, all the doctors were just baffled. They didn't know what happened. So they continued to work on his case. And uh, we were contacted by Jackson's pediatrician who said that the infectious disease doctor would love to meet with us. Um, they got the pathology reports back and he had an idea of what might have happened. Um, and at that point we just wanted answers. We knew they weren't going to fix anything so we met with um, Dr. Weinberg and um, he told us that our son may have an immunodeficiency. Um, we had no idea that it's not in his family, it's not in my family. Um, and I actually spent a lot of time researching chronic granulomatose disease, which is the disease the doctor said he might have. And I wasn't researching it more so to find out what it was. I was researching it to kind of prove the doctor wrong and be like, my kid didn't have this. Like, you know, this is impossible. It's not nowhere in our family. Um, it wasn't until I got pregnant again um, and I had my second child on June 1st of 2016. Um, we contacted the doctor, or the doctor um, wanted us to have him tested too. Um, in the meantime, I had been tested um, as a carrier and those results came back negative. So we were kind of like, yeah, he won't have it, you know. No big deal, it's just protocol, kind of make sure we're covering all our bases. And then um, Alex got very sick. He's our second child. He's one now. Um, 
when he was three months old. And in that time, his results came back, and they came back positive for CGD. Um, at that point, we couldn't really deny the fact that that's what Jackson had passed from. Um, I had to be retested as my first test was negative, so um, they did find out I have the same genetic mutation as both of my sons. Um, and when he was three months old, yes, that's how it all yeah. kind of got confirmed. He had a fever of 104 for eight days. Um, on the eighth day, they sent us to the hospital. Um, we were then in the hospital for 16 days to find out he had CGD-related colitis. And today, with the help of our doctors, um, the pharmaceutical company even sends a nurse to our house. <laughs> um, he's a happy little kid. Yeah. He's perfectly he's healthy. Healthy. Um, it's just like a, it's become part of life, you know. Antifungals, antibiotics, anti-inflammatories twice a day, um, interferon gamma injections three times a week. But, you know, it's part of our schedule now. Um, so when we found out that Jackson, they thought that Jackson had CGD, we both were doing research to try to figure out what it was, what it was, uh, what involved in it. Um, and obviously the more research we did, the less we kind of found, I, I guess, is the best way to put it. Um, and I don't think we, neither of us really researched that hard. It's one of those things where it's not going to change anything. So, it, you know, Catherine came back as not a carrier, so we weren't really overly concerned with future kids. Um, so we did, you know, we did enough research on CGD to understand why it affected Jackson, and that was kind of it. So when Alex got diagnosed with CGD, when his test came back, um, that's that's when we really started doing a lot of research. And I just happened to stumble across IDF and their website, um, and I filled out a bunch of information on their website and. A week later, we got books and pamphlets of information and all different things, um, just with research for all primary immunodeficiency diseases, um, including CGD. They had a lot of specialty books and um, literature on CGD. Um, you know, a lot of the research for CGD isn't done in the United States. A lot of it's taken place in the UK and London, because that's where the disease is most prevalent for, for whatever reason. Um, so the IDF really helped us with understanding exactly how the research were or how the disease worked, um, what we needed to do as parents, what our son needed to do as um, as a uh, affected um, as someone with the disease, uh, and then you know we got information about we started getting emails about the conference and all the things that the IDF do. Um, so we just happened to just stumble across yeah, it. stumble it across it really. I kind of, I guess, blind luck that we found the IDF, and they've been a huge help ever since, yeah. as far as any information we ever needed, um, bringing us to this conference and letting us join along. I mean, just the information that we found in the first day, or, or we received in the first day, is just outstanding. Yeah, it was almost like it was meant to be, because this year the conference has a special um, symposium on CGD, so, um, and it's actually sponsored by the pharmaceutical company that makes one of Alex's medications, so. The nurse from the pharmaceutical company that comes to our house actually is here. So, and, you know, I think coming to the conference, neither of us really thought that we'd gain any more information than we already kind of had. Um, we were just really looking forward for the networking piece. Mm -hmm. You know, the disease is one in two, every 250,000 people. So, when you think about those odds, it's just you feel like you're all alone. So, I think the biggest thing we were looking for is to come and meet people that have kids that are either the same age as Alex or older. So, we could ask them and talk to them and network to see what they've done and uh, what they've gone through with kids that are older. Um, we've already met several families. We learned a lot. You know, like I said, yeah. we didn't really, we weren't sure how much more we'd learn, um, but we really just in the first day of the symposium, we really learned a lot, especially about um, bone marrow transplants and gene therapy. That was one of the things that Alex's doctor was talking to us about was bone marrow transplants, and that's kind of what he wanted to get information. Um, he's perfectly healthy ever since three months old, but you know it's one of those things where he said you need a crystal ball because you never know what could change. So he wanted to at least get information to you know to to start looking into possibly doing a bone marrow transplant. Because that's the kind of the kicker is you know he's 
he presents healthy right now, but Jackson basically always always did too. So it's hard for me to, I don't know, see life going further because, you know, Jackson was always happy and healthy and, and Alex is the same exact way. We're very lucky we have beautiful children, but um, the, all the information I've gotten here has been just, it is a little overwhelming, there's a lot, but um, it kind of helps like, bring clarity to the situation. You know, a lot of times you're just like, mm -hmm. the odds of him getting this disease are so slim. The odds of me having two kids with the same disease is pretty slim. Um, so, and being the carrier, there's times where I'm like, you know, it's my fault. Um, you sometimes just go, why me? <laughs> but meeting people here, there's been just amazing people here that they just give you hope, really. Makes you know that you're not alone. Mm -hmm.